The tale unfolds as Ethan awakens abruptly in a thick woodland, a U.S. Secret Service employee from Seattle recovering from an automobile collision. With facial injuries and his mind addled, he manages to navigate his way out of the pine-infested woodlands. He arrives at the tranquil town of Wayward Pines, Idaho, his entry greeted by speculative glances from locals. Following a collapse from exhaustion in a diner, a waitress reveals to him where he is. He wakes up in a hospital bed in Wayward Pines, where a nurse named Pam looks after him, informing him of minor injuries from the automobile collision. Anxious, Ethan inquires about his colleague Stallings, who was present during the crash, tragically learning of Stallings' demise. Upon inquiring about his personal belongings and mobile, he's told they're held at the police station, however, he's advised to rest. Despite being the lone patient and going against Pam's advice, he leaves the hospital to retrieve his belongings. At the station, he is unable to gain access to his possessions and heads to a nearby pub. In the meantime, Ethan's superior, Adam, tells his wife, Teresa, about the accident, but that they haven't located Ethan's body. In the pub, he borrows a phone from a waitress named Beverly with an unsuccessful attempt to get in contact with his family. Beverly empathizes and offers her address if he requires more assistance. He discloses his identity, revealing his search for two colleague agents, Evans and Kate, the latter of his lovers. He later notices a curious note from Beverly about the lack of cricket sounds in Wayward Pines. Whilst moving towards the motel, the sounds of crickets filled the air, originating from hidden speakers. Unable to afford his hotel fare in the morning, he visits Beverly's address to find an empty cabin populated only by Evan's decomposing corpse. Back at the station, Sheriff Arnold's indifferent attitude and denial of having Ethan's possessions leave Ethan stranded. Conducting phone calls again proves useless. Returning to the local pub, he discovers a new worker and Beverly's unanticipated absence. After a dispute, Ethan is rendered unconscious, awakening once more confined to the hospital bed. Dr. Jenkins, a psychiatrist, insists on undertaking a procedure due to an alleged blood clot despite Ethan's objection. Sedated, he's abandoned in the operation room. To his surprise, Beverly rescues him, and they flee the hospital after incapacitating Pam. In an isolated timber hut, Beverly shares her story of arriving in Wayward Pines in 1999, spending a year trying to escape with Evans. Evans tragically loses his life in the process. The protagonist, Ethan, falls into a sedative-induced unconsciousness and reveals to the woman that the year is actually 2014. When he wakes up, Beverly, the woman, has disappeared. Meanwhile, in Seattle, detectives are left puzzled by the lack of evidence relating to Ethan's presence in a car accident. In the peculiar town of Wayward Pines, Ethan discovers a familiar face at a party, Kate, another individual thought to be missing. Kate appears noticeably older to Ethan, but nonetheless, he pursues her to a home she shares with a man named Harold. Counter to Ethan's expectations, Kate refutes knowing him and warns him about the surveillance present throughout the town, comprised of covert cameras and microphones. Surprisingly, she reveals having lived in Wayward Pines for the twelve preceding years. This greatly confuses and alarms Ethan, who steals a car in an unsuccessful attempt to leave. He then tries to flee the town by foot, but is stopped by a large electrified wall surrounding the village. The town's sheriff, Arnold, confronts Ethan about the car theft and dismisses Ethan's claims of being part of the Secret Service. Determined, Ethan revisits a cabin where he had earlier found the body of his colleague, untouched. He discovers a cryptic notebook stashed in his late friend's boot, but his investigation is cut short by Arnold's unexpected arrival with a promise of forensic experts coming. He's forced to leave, retreating back to a local hotel, where he unexpectedly runs into Beverly. She clandestinely arranges a covert meeting and hands him money, hinting at a plan involving Evans's notebook. Using the cash, Ethan manages to call the Secret Service from a cafe, only to realize that the conversation operator is a sham. 
He suspects something is amiss when the cashier quickly scoops up the banknote from him. Ethan later tries and fails to connect with Kate at the toy store where she works. Her aloof demeanor and adherence to the town's strict code of silence about past life further confuse Ethan. He makes an unsettling discovery when he visits Evan's home. According to Evan's wife, her husband had committed suicide and she had no idea who Ethan was. A desperate Ethan confronts Arnold for answers, but Arnold divulges nothing, advising Ethan to remain in the hotel. As the saga continues, Ethan retrieves the notebook from Evan's belongings when he visits the morgue where Evan's body was taken. A shocking revelation awaits him there. When he spots his own wife, Teresa, and their son, Ben, being carried into the hospital on stretchers. But then, they're nowhere to be found. The doctor, Jenkins, warns Ethan of his deteriorating medical condition and insists on immediate surgical intervention. Concurrently, back in Seattle, Teresa becomes distressed about Ethan's unknown location, causing their son, Ben, to grow suspicious. Ethan's baffling disappearance spirals into a tense whodunit when he allegedly flees with Kate, his whereabouts concealed even from Adam during their clandestine contact. The suspense intensifies as Ethan deciphers the enigmatic plexus of the town, his situation becoming perilous with each passing minute. At their covert meeting place in the Pine Forest, Ethan rendezvous with Beverly who discloses the shocking revelation that he's been fitted with a tracking device covertly. Beverly exposes further horrors. Sheriff Arnold had ordered a public execution of Evans, a horrifying spectacle for the townsfolk. Despite an unsettling unease, Ethan accepts an invitation from Kate, rendezvousing at her domicile for supper. Careful not to rouse suspicion due to potential surveillance, he leaves the dislodged tracking chip on his hotel bed and apprehensively embarks on a quest into Pine Forest. Following clues indicated on Evan's map, he retrieves a concealed package successfully. Yet, while away, Ethan perceives Arnold firing a gunshot towards Kate's home, alarming Beverly, who sat at the dinner table filled with fear. In smoke and mirrors, they evade the now alerted populace. Ethan instructs Beverly to secure the agent's package while he distracts the townsfolk. Unfortunately, the town folk capture Beverly and subsequent events echo a nightmarish public execution, watched by a shocked Ethan, hidden nearby. Simultaneously, Teresa, Ethan's wife, and their son, Ben, are in Idaho to investigate Ethan's perplexing disappearance. After arriving at the Secret Service field office in Boise, Idaho, the last known location of Ethan, Teresa stumbles upon vital clues leading to wayward pines, However, they're halted in their tracks by Sheriff Pope, who wreaks havoc on their car under the pretense of resolving an oil leak. Morning unveils a telltale sign. Ethan stumbles on a supply truck, a link to the external world. Concealing himself in the truck's cargo area, he finds himself in a bustling warehouse littered with abandoned vehicles, including one that belongs to his wife, Teresa. Stuffed inside the car, he finds her belongings along with Ben's, adding another layer of intrigue to his ongoing ordeal. The plot takes a dramatic twist just as Sheriff Arnold reappears, attacking Ethan and rendering him unconscious. He later awakens in an infirmary, the reality eerier than ever. Despite his skepticism, Ethan is informed by a nurse that his family, his wife Teresa and their son Ben, have been relocated to Wayward Pines, where they took residence in Beverly's old house. Overwhelmed with a concoction of relief and fear for their safety, Ethan ventures to see his family, sternly advising Teresa to avoid unnecessary contact with others and be alert of the intrusive watchfulness of the town. He takes his concerns to the law enforcement, confronting the police officer Arnold and Nurse Pam, demanding the reason for his family's strange relocation. Arnold defends it as a move made for their joy an explanation that Ethan rejects and angrily demands more clarity. The escalating dispute is broken off by an unexpected phone call, suggesting Arnold is merely being manipulated by some unseen figure orchestrating a grand scheme. Upon leaving the police station, 
Ethan crosses paths with Dr. Jenkins. Dr. Jenkins suggests he puts an end to any plans of fleeing, but Ethan firmly disagrees, insisting Wayward Pines isn't where he belongs. Searching for more clarity, he arranges a secret meeting with Kate in the shield of the Pine Forest, escaping the town's ever-watchful cameras. But his son Ben unexpectedly follows and witnesses the meetup. This prompts him to race back to break the news to Teresa. His homecoming is panic-stricken when he finds his family vanished with only Teresa's wedding ring left behind. His frantic search leads him to the isolation wall, where he locates his family under gun threat by Arnold. The confrontation escalates and is broken off by Ben swerving a car into Arnold. Arnold's last words as he lay dying cryptically caution Ethan that the reality is even more terrifying than his suspicions. Ethan manages to escape with his family after snatching the isolation wall's key from Arnold. However, a bizarre figure appears from the opened gate, accompanied by an eerie sound, grabbing Arnold's lifeless body. Ethan hastily shuts the gate and heads home with his family. Deeply disturbed by the recent events, Ethan instructs his family to maintain an illusion of normality while they plan their escape. The next day, a postman delivers a uniform and a welcoming letter to Ben for Wayward Pine Academy. In desperate need of a weapon, Ethan swings by the police station only to meet the mayor, Brad, who advises him to adhere to the town rules and cease his probing. To his great surprise, Ethan is celebrated as the new sheriff of the town, complete with a celebratory cake and a newspaper headline announcing Arnold's retirement. Reluctantly, Ethan decides to play along. Similarly, Ben begins attending Wayward Pine Academy, where his teacher and the mayor's wife, Megan, inputs the ideologies of the town into the students. Ethan, determined to find answers, stumbles upon secret documents detailing the town residents, urging him to dig deeper into the mysteries of Wayward Pines. As escalating tension grips the inscrutable corners of Wayward Pines, the townsfolk sees a bloke named McCall. They suspect him of spreading insalubrious notions graffiti-style. Nurse Pam vigorously argues for a public outpouring of justice the following night, a call for execution that Sheriff Ethan is profoundly against. In his office, Ethan grills McCall in search of truth, only to be cut short by a phone call, reluctantly approving the execution set for the following eve. That night, Ethan's lad Ben absconds with classmate Amy, their curious mischief echoing the growing dissent among the town's youth. Ethan and his wife Teresa share a meal with Mayor and his spouse Megan at a local eatery, an occasion other significant townsfolk like Pam and Kate with her spouse are also partaking in. Subsequent celebrations mark Ethan's ascension as sheriff, and though Pam lauds his appointment, she emphasizes that the enforcement of the town's rigid laws is paramount. Haunted by his new responsibilities, Ethan swears to unveil the actual wickedness lurking within Wayward Pines. Post-dinner, Teresa is asked to head home whilst Ethan plots illicitly to aid McCall's prison break. Yet McCall proposes a diversion towards the isolation wall. On a cliff near this wall, McCall contemplates its real function. Is it erected to keep townsfolk in or something more sinister out? In a fit of despair, McCall latches on to Ethan and then dashes towards the electrified wall, his life claimed by his audacious attempt at freedom. Teresa, in a meanwhile, is offered a job at Wayward Pines Realty Associates, McCall's old workplace. Resolute to escape Wayward Pines, Ethan arms himself and successfully scales the cliff, only to realize he's under the watchful gaze of an odd figure who later attacks him, leaving him injured before the dawn. Ethan readies to traverse the pine forest towards the nearest city as daylight emerges in search of aid. In the town, Ben finds his new school disturbingly ideal, and Teresa begins her new job. She's tasked with assisting a flustered newcomer, Wayne, who seems baffled and unsettled. Sensing mutual experiences, Teresa offers assistance and subtly probes into his past, only to be interrupted by Pam. In a strategic move, Teresa later reveals Wayne about Wayward Pines' surveillance system under the cover of a rumbling dryer noise during a supposed house tour. 
Wayne divulges to her that he woke up in a chamber surrounded by others, a memory that mirrors her own. Simultaneously, Ben and two other new pupils are summoned to an all-white room for an orientation session with Megan, suggesting a more profound conspiracy at play. Maintaining an aura of mystery, the session unfolds with hints of concealed knowledge soon to be revealed about the strange happenings in Wayward Pines. The instructor, Megan, brings forward a shocking portrayal of a ghastly, hairless humanoid beast familial to humans. This predominant creature is referred to as Abby, a name derived from the term aberrant. Megan explains how these aberrant beings, or Abbies, form packs and roam around. A short pause for lunch provides the students with a brief relief where they can digest the unnerving revelation. As the session recommences, each pupil is given an antique coin, marked 2095. This leads Megan to disclose an alarming fact. They are not existing in the year 2014 as presumed, but in fact, 4028. She goes on to unravel the fact that what seemed like casual incidents were intentional choices to bring them to wayward pines. The villagers, students included, have been in suspended animation for over 2,000 years, handpicked by David, the mastermind behind the program who, according to Megan, eternally watches over them from unseen quarters. Ethan, feeling perpetually monitored, braves a venture into the forest, Ingeniously utilizing a deceased animal to camouflage his smell, he silently observes the abbeys. His expedition leads him to the remnants of human presence, providing validation to Megan's truths. Unexpectedly, he crosses paths with a helicopter and makes the acquaintance of Dr. Jenkins, who, surprisingly, reveals his true identity as David, the visionary behind Wayward Pines. He suggests Ethan to return to town without delay. The narrative's progression is now unfolding on the screen in front of you, dear friends.